pray together this prayer that today is appointed for today, which is the first Sunday um, of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So um, I thought today we could talk just a little bit about um, Advent and what to see what, what, what you know, what you don't know, what you might want to know, um, what you don't care to know. Um, I, I think sometimes Advent... <laughs> at least to me, appears to run a little bit more under the, uh, under the radar uh, than, than, say, maybe Lent, and possibly because of the, of the length of time we're involved with, with, with in, that we're in the season of Advent, maybe because um, so much of, of Advent seems to get consumed by or taken over by, uh, by, 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 by Christmas. And so, you know, sometimes in, in the church, it's hard to, we have to be, I think, make a real effort to, to, div, to divide ourselves from, you know, what we, uh, how we observe and mark um, our way through the church year uh, as we're trying to then run parallel to the rest of the year. And, um, and as you know, uh, much of what has already begun to happen out there is the celebration of Christmas, and that has certainly been going on for some time now. Um, you know, it, it used to just irritate the fool out of me when I would go into some place in you know late September, and there would already be you know Christmas. Um, but now I just don't really pay much attention to it anymore because it just kind of is what it is. But I do think that one of the benefits of being um, liturgical Christians, in other words, those who you know, mark our path, our journey, um, you know, with God in this way is that we have a chance to uh, prepare and to think about um, the different times of the, of the church year that then can help us as we celebrate those things that tend to be uh, more secular. So um, today, as you know, is the first Sunday um, of Advent. And, you know, sometimes we all get a little confused. The Sundays that we, the, the Sundays in, during the season of Advent are the Sundays of Advent. And then when we move into Lent, it's the Sundays in Lent. So of Advent, in Lent. Don't ask me why, that's just the way it is. Um, so today is the first Sunday um, of Advent. So I thought we could just talk a little bit with each other about um, what, 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 what do you know about Advent? What, what does Advent mean to you, if anything? And how is it that maybe you um, um, have, have marked some of this, your, your, your time during Advent as you get ready to, uh, to celebrate Christmas? So I'm just going to open it up for a second and let me, let me, let me hear from you. To me... Um Advent has always symbolized the beginning, the leading up to, and it's a time of preparation, both mentally and spiritually, for the coming of Christ. Thank you. Other thoughts? Wow, I got a lot of work to do this morning. <laughs> Anything else about, about Advent? Well, when, especially growing up, um, we had an Advent wreath, and it was like a treat for the, one of the three kids to get to light the, the candle. But it was also my parents <coughs> really focused us, n n don't think about Christmas, think about the birth of Christ. And kind of we were, you know, taught that early on, and I've tried to do that with my sons as well. Great, thank you. Other, other thoughts, other things that some of you have done. All right, well, I'm just going to run through a few things that, um, that, I, that I have thrown together, and some of these may be a little bit repetitive, and I'll just move on through them. But as I mentioned, this is the opening, um, this is the opening, 
what we use as our opening prayer is the collect for today, the prayer that's appointed for today. You know, at the beginning of every celebration of the Holy Eucharist, there is a particular prayer known as a collect um, that, that, we, that we read. And those, and e each Sunday throughout the church year has its own, own collect. Um, and those are found in the back of the, or, or in, in the back part of the. Um, well, where are they? Where are they found, Nathan? Are they? Are they? I think they're. I think they actually are before the Holy Eucharist, aren't they? Uh, yeah. 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 So, so, so if you if you ever have, ever have any interest or wondering why we read a certain prayer every Sunday, well, they're all there from from today. And as you also may know, but if you don't, today is also Happy New Year. This is the beginning of the church year. The first Sunday of Advent begins the church year. This way in which we, you know, mark and walk through the life of Jesus year after year after year. And so obviously we begin with preparing for his, the birth of Jesus, celebrating his birth, and then we walk through the various parts of Jesus' life and ministry. So this is the prayer that's appointed for today. Now, in this prayer, you'll see, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Now, in, this, now in, this, in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day. So note that, that what, what's important here is now in this time of this mortal life. So year after year after year after year, we celebrate the birth of Christ, right? Well, Christ was obviously was born, but what we talk about, what we try to hold up, what we try to be mindful of is that over and over again, we're celebrating that birth. We're celebrating that Christ continues to be born in us, through us, comes into this world in ways that sometimes we're very much aware of and some way, sometimes in ways that we're not as aware of. And so what in, in Advent, what we're trying to do is to hold up and remember that, that Christ came into this world in the form of a child, came to visit us in great humility, but, but, and it's a big but here, there's going to be something else. That in the last day, when he shall come again to judge both the living and the dead. So we live, often you'll hear Advent talked about as being living, it means being living in tension. The tension between what has already happened and what is to come. You may remember that in, in our celebration of the Holy Eucharist, we talk about Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again, will come again. So we're, taught, we're living in that tension between the reality that we know that Christ came into the world, that God came into the world in the form of a child, but, but Christ will come again. All right, so when we think of Advent, many of our minds go to anticipation. We anticipate the, com the, the coming hope of Jesus, the already, again, what I just said, the already, but the not yet. William Adams is a priest who says Advent, probably more than any other season, calls our attention to the great mystery that we call time, and especially to God's activity within time. It calls us to be mindful of time, of now, and again, of, of the now, and then again, what is, to, uh, what is to come. All right, so we know that Christmas is coming. And we hustle, we bustle, we go to parties, we do things, we celebrate even before it even is Christmas, and we try hard to prepare our hearts, again, to receive the gift, the greatest gift of all, the gift of the Christ child, the gift of God that came into the world that, that is the reason that we're, we're here. And so in the midst of all this hustle and bustle, again, being mindful of the fact that we're getting ready to celebrate, Advent is not yet that time. We're not called to celebrate during Advent. Now, you know, in some, in some traditions, in some places, you can, you can probably go to church this morning and hear some sort of hymn that would be a Christmas hymn. Well, as you know, and to sometimes to some, of, some people's chagrin, we, we, don't, we don't do that, do we? We're, we, we, you know, we, we, what we sing is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and things that are helping us to prepare and to think about the fact that we know that Christmas is coming 
but it's not here. It's not here yet. Now, I think I, I'll just I, I, I personally think that Advent is one of the hardest things to live into for the, because of the fact that most of us are kind of don't do very well. I was going to say something else at waiting, do we? <laughs> waiting is not our strongest suit as, as, as a people, is it? We, we are on the go. We like to move. We like for things to happen. If I want to know something, I can say, Sandy, look that up on your phone for me and get it right now, right? I don't have to wait to find out what the score is, what the market's doing, what the temperature is. I don't, I don't have to wait. We don't have to wait. Nobody here likes to wait in, in any, nobody likes to wait out here at this intersection at all, do they? Because if you get distracted on your phone, you're going to get blown out of the intersection with a horn, right? We don't like to wait, but yet this, so, so Advent is very countercultural um, with regard to that because we know what's coming and we're ready for it to happen. We're ready to celebrate. <coughs> So, during this time of year, as we hear today in the Gospel reading from Luke, we listen to passages from the Bible, we listen to words of Holy Scripture that are infused with a different type of language, language of darkness, tribulation, apocalypse. Uh, it, it is referred to as being apocalyptic language that, that talks about or focuses on that which is to come, what is going to, uh, what's going to happen. Um, today, I think, is Luke, the 21st chapter of Luke, and Jesus is talking about there will be signs, there will be these things that are going to happen, there'll be distress, there'll be fear and foreboding, um, and then he tells a parable about a fig tree. So all of these things that Jesus, that we, that we pull from, and I'm going to show you something else from Matthew in a moment. And so when we think about these, when we think about Advent, um, oh, I went, sorry, I went the wrong way, I think. Um, let me move on. Let me move on to. Okay, so the church has traditionally begun Advent with these apocalyptic passages that talk about the end of time, the when Christ will return, and um, in Matthew twenty four, as as we hear in, in Luke twenty one, there are. Um, um, we, we hear about that, but there's not much, if anything, that talks about his birth. So it's interesting that we begin this time of preparation to celebrate Christmas in talking about um, not his birth, but passages of Scripture um, that talk about something completely different. And this is from Matthew 24. Jesus left the temple. His disciples came over and said, look at all these buildings. And Jesus replied, do you see these buildings? They will certainly be torn down. Not one stone will be left. Jesus, later, Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, and his disciples came to him and said, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered, don't let anyone fool you. Many will come and claim to be me. They will say they are the Messiah, and they will fool many people. You will soon hear about wars and threats of wars. Don't be afraid. These things have to happen first, but that isn't the end. But that's what Jesus is trying to point to, is that there will be an end, but that these things that we're dealing with and that we face right now, um, wars and threats of war and terrorism and all of these things are going to happen, but that's not, he says, the sign of the end, but that there will be an end, and that's when the kingdom of God will be fulfilled and God's kingdom will, um, will be will be. Uh, Will come, will, will come to um, it, it, its end in a way that's different. And this is just a, um, a, um, uh, uh, an image of this, of what's you know, depicted as this apocalyptic language, of this apocalypse in which the, the, the world will somehow come to an end. All right, so as I mentioned, this marks the beginning of a new liturgical year. It's also interesting to note that, we, that Advent always begins... Um, in the darkness, we've all you know we have as we've all noticed by about what four o'clock now, <laughs> it starts getting dark, and it moves until that we get to that winter solstice when we begin to get a little bit more light each day. But Advent always begins, and we celebrate or we observe Advent in the darkest part of the year, and this darkness symbolizes the Israelite start world as they were waiting. 
for the promise of the Messiah. And as we now wait for Christ to come again, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come um, again. So one of the things that we do that we did this morning at the 8 o'clock service that we'll do at 1030 is we mark this time of the year symbolically, uh, and there's also an opportunity for you to do that at home as well with, with an Advent wreath. Um, with an Advent wreath with four candles um, plus a fifth one that's in the middle for, for Christmas Day. Each Sunday celebrates a theme, hope, peace, joy, and love. Um, and what we know about Advent, there's not, there's, quite frankly, there's not a whole lot of, uh, about the history of Advent. Um, it can be traced back to sometime in the 4th century, and then it seems to have just kind of evolved since then. But there's not a, there's not a clear, uh, at least that I'm aware of or could find. I mean, Nathan, do you know any more about the history of it than that? I, 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 don't, I, just, I just don't think that there's a whole lot that has been written about the history or has been discovered about the history of, of, of Advent. But this is how we choose to observe it today. There's nothing sacramental. There's nothing particularly special or holy about an Advent wreath. It's just a, a way of helping us to think about and mark these, 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 four, these four Sundays that lead us into, into our celebration. Another way of helping us to mark the time, okay? Today is the first Sunday of Advent, and then there'll be the second Sunday. We'll move our way through until we're able to light all of them and then to, uh, and then to celebrate um, at, at Christmas. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was somebody who um, sp spent some time um, confined and imprisoned because of his role in Nazi, against the Nazi Germany. And he talks about Advent, that you can only celebrate Advent if you're troubled in soul. The celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who, soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, but who are looking forward to something greater to come. So again, it's that sense of looking forward of being willing to wait, being willing to be patient, be willing to look for and to find a way to celebrate by being patient, by waiting. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, part of this, you, you, you look at contextually in that, in that Dietrich Bonhoeffer was somebody who suffered a lot for the stands that he took, the stance that he took, and for the, and the fact that he was imprisoned. Um, and, and I think, I'm not positive, I think he wrote this. I think this might have been from Letters and Papers, his book, Letters and Papers in Prison. Um, I think he might have written this in prison. But, that, but you're right. We don't always think about it that way. But, um, but I think that, that, what he, that, that the point he's trying to make is that, is that, is that it, 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 when, when we're really willing to wait, and especially for those who are um, uh, poor and imperfect, and I'm not, he may not necessarily be talking about um, material poverty here, but maybe he's talking about in, in po in po poverty of the, of the soul, poverty of the spirit, yeah. You know, it, it, that's how then you really appreciate and celebrate the coming of God into the world. All right. Um, your thoughts, comments, questions. Well, the phrase that we say, uh, and implying what's to come next. Um, what, do, what should we think about what comes next? <laughs> so what, what are, you, are, you, are you referring to a particular phrase? Um, would it have been the, in the, yeah, well, of course, you know, part of what we're doing 
in this particular time of the year is, is we're getting ready to celebrate the coming of God into the world in the form of a human being. And then as we know, as we, as we walk through the rest of this church year, this liturgical year, then we, you know, the, the, then we move into the, the, what, what, what comes to the culmination of that, of that coming of God into the world is the, is the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so what we're told because of that is that what is to come is, an on, is ongoing life with God. That what we're promised is a way of being in a relationship with God that's not just in the here and now, but that, 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 go, that goes on in ways that we don't necessarily all know about, right? Because we're still here. But that we are able to see and experience sometimes through our worship, sometimes through those ways in which we have a, 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 an experience of God or of the holy. It gives us a glimpse of what is, of what is to come. But what we're told and what we are, believe is that, again, that Christ died, Christ rose, and that Christ will come again. And that, and that and as we say in the, in the creed, that he will come to judge the living and the dead. I think where I get, uh, I have questions, is will to come. Christ, uh, I'm not verbalizing this yet. It, you know, obviously, we don't know the future. Um, well, good point. Uh, it, it's just such an open-ended phrase that we use. It's hard to uh, grab a hold of and say, yes, this is what I'm yearning for. Well, it is, and I, I think that's part of, you know, that, that word that drives some people to distraction is mystery, the mystery of the faith. We don't know, obviously, exactly what's going to happen, but what we do know or what, we have been, what we've been told and what we've been assured is that, is that at, some point, at some point what God has created will come to an end in a way that, that, that brings the, the, the fulfillment of God to its highest purpose. That the kingdom of God will be fully realized. And that somehow and in some way we will all be part of that. Because of the fact that we've been created by God. And so what is to come and what will happen remains obviously still somewhat of a mystery. And, and, and probably some of what we articulate is, is the theme of today, which is hope. We remain hopeful that God will fulfill God's promises in ways that we, that we believe God will. <coughs> this whole thing about hope and troubled soul, I'm still pursuing that in my mind. And I thought to myself, when I walk in the door here, I leave all that behind. But, it, you know, by having a rough day or things are crazy or not, whatever. And I just know that the people that are here and the things that are happening here are all, um, I mean, I really walk in with a smile on my face because it is, it's safe, it's hopeful, it's, it's lovely, even when people are crabby or having a bad day. <laughs> it's still, we're all here together to support each other. And I guess I don't doubt right now. And the, this day, maybe in, you know, tomorrow I'll doubt. But right now I come because this is a, I, I see it's all the possibility. It's going to happen. There, there are a couple of things I wanted to bring up. But to the point that, you, that you're talking about, I think that is a really good thing to think about because, you know, part of it is we know the end of the story. We know what's going to happen. We know that Christ will come again. But also, I it. exactly, and Not you believe no, it. Believe you okay? Well, good distinction. You believe it, but at the same time, we are also thinking about the collective experience because we are the body of Christ, and so we have to. Be, you know, one one example is that we have the giving tree. We have the giving tree set up because there are people who are troubled in soul, who are poor in spirit, 
who are impoverished in other ways. And so part of this is that this time of year is just simply a very difficult time for a lot of people. A lot of the things that get brought up um, that, that are able to kind of stay below the surface get closer and closer because number one, as David already pointed out, it's dark at four, you know, in the, in the, in the afternoon. That darkness is not just a metaphor, but it is a very hard time for, for a lot of people. And so we're kind of thinking big picture that we have reason to be hopeful because we do believe. Um, we have some sense of certainty um, in the midst of other issues that Christ will come again. But there's also a war in Ukraine. There's the Middle East. There's Sudan. There are so many other places where we need to be able to interject that sense of light in the darkness. And so we have to think big picture that um, maybe my soul is not particularly troubled, but I also understand that trouble is right outside my door. And Advent is a way to help us see the big picture of that Jesus has to be that light for every single person. Um, you know, whether they are poor in spirit or not at, at the moment. One other thing that I wanted to bring up, you talked about Advent, you know, Sundays of Advent, but then Sundays in Lent, and you're, you said, like, you didn't know why. I can answer that question. <laughs> so um, how many days are in Lent, the season of Lent? 40, 40 okay. We start on Ash Wednesday, we get to Easter, we have 40 days in Lent, except we don't count Sundays. If you count the Sundays that lead up to Lent, you have something like 47 days. Because Sundays are always, no matter what season you're in, a little celebration of the resurrection. And so you don't count Sundays during the season of Lent because um, basically not a lot of people practice this, but it can be permissible to not do your Lenten fast on Sunday. Uh, so it is a Sunday in Lent, big season, but then Advent is just simply Sundays of Advent. Other thoughts? Comments? Well, I hope you have a wonderful kickoff to your um, observance of this time of year as you prepare to celebrate Christmas. And know that there are opportunities and ways to do that here. There are um, Advent wreaths available back in the back. Uh, next Sunday evening, there will be a service of Advent lessons and carols, which if you have attended before, you know is one of the... Um, I think one of the most beautiful things that we do here at St. Peter's. Uh, so that will be next Sunday. Um, and again, along the way, there are opportunities for worship and uh, Bible study and, and ways to, 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 to get ready to celebrate then on, um, on Christmas Eve, which we will do in a, in a significant way here. All right, good to be with you. God bless you.